Hey, what is up guys? My name is Tom Spark and welcome back to another video. Today, what we're gonna be talking about in detail is what could ExpressVPN do to improve their application? This series is kind of like a, a way for me to analyze VPNs and kind of talk to them face to face or at least my face to them watching my face and tell them how to improve their product so you guys can benefit. Not only that, but this series also serves as kind of a tutorial or a guide for understanding how ExpressVPN or other VPNs work, what the settings do, and what you might see in the future with an application. So guys, ExpressVPN is a second VPN I've done this for. I've done TorGuard already, talking about TorGuard's app, what they could do to improve it. And now I'm going to be talking about ExpressVPN. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to check out VPNTierList.com. This is the complete works of my channel, showing every VPN ranked by the review score. You can also check out my favorite product page for my recommended products, or go to home and then click here to check out my VPN Noob to VPN Master Course, where I talk about how the tier list was created, what you need to know about VPN, and how to choose one the best way. Anyways guys, back to the video. All right guys, so here on the channel, what I do for my application section, I usually run it through like, these are all the things that I keep in mind. I'm not putting it point here, point there, more of like an aggregate kind of intuitive feel that I have for application considering these things. And then I'm also gonna talk about some other things you can't see right now, which is more about usability and what I would like to see overall from the application in the future. So guys, the first thing I wanna talk about with ExpressVPN is that we do not necessarily have an application kill switch. What we do have is a network lock. Basically what happens here is that if, if ExpressVPN for some reason disconnects, theoretically it's gonna stop your internet traffic and act like a network kill switch so that way you don't get any IP leaks. Um, I would prefer here to have a little bit more control with that, the kill switches here with ExpressVPN for sure. I would like to see an application kill switch. Let's say I turn uh, ExpressVPN off or some reason it disconnects. It will therefore shut off Qubit Torrent, making sure you don't have any IP leaks. So this is like a double kind of way to make sure you're secure. It could be like another way to configure um, security, preventing IP leaks, and we don't see that with ExpressVPN, which is definitely a little bit of a bummer. We do have that network kill switch though, which is good. And, and here are some other things ExpressVPN application is lacking. It doesn't have DNS customization anywhere to be seen. Um, that's definitely kind of a bummer. Um, you only can use ExpressVPN's DNS servers, which is kind of disappointing. Some other VPN providers, TorGuard gives you a lot of different options, different controls. You can configure when the DNS is used when, which is really nice. ExpressVPN also doesn't really have any port configurations. Port configurations is very nice. That lets you change ports depending on what kind of port you need. Sometimes specific ports are blocked with certain internet service providers. Sometimes they're blocked with certain connections, university, workplaces, block certain ports, and you can't use the VPN there. So it's disappointing to not see that with ExpressVPN. Another thing we're lacking is proxy support. You don't have any proxy settings here to configure um, to put alongside your VPN. We see other VPNs like AirVPN, TorGuard, and some other ones adding that feature. Private Internet Access also does as well. But we don't see that. Um, so you could also put a SOX5 proxy in some of those other VPNs. You can't do that here. Um, script support. Now, why would you want to do that exactly? Well, it's kind of like I talked about. So you can have your VPN connected, and then it's like another double layer of kind of security with your proxy. So it's kind of like anonymizing your IP kind of twice, which can be really nice. We also have script support missing. So sometimes VPN providers, most notably something like TorGuard, lets you implement your own kind of scripts. You can use these control certain applications, have different controls with VPN. If you launch your VPN, the browser will launch. If you disconnect VPN, maybe your browser will disconnect, your browser will close down and then open up a different browser like Tor browser or something like that. There are some cool things you can do with it. And you can look at like the TorGuard forums. I've seen people making cool scripts for TorGuard. We don't see any of that powerful feature here, which is disappointing. But honestly, most of the VPN applications don't have that kind of feature. Next thing we want to talk about is we do see the option for um, server favoriting. I kind of put it right here, kind of looks a little weird, but I'm moving it there to see it. So as you can see, you could um, star the servers and favorite them, which is just something nice. And you have the specific ones you can see. So that's very nice. Let's bring that back up. All right, there we go. We could see both the application and that. The next thing we want to talk about is um, we have the server favoriting. We don't have any dedicated IP support, which is kind of a disappointing with TorGuard, some other applications out there. You could add in streaming IPs, dedicated IPs. 
These are very useful. For example, if you want to bypass captures commonly associated that you'll get when using a VPN, sometimes banks will make you kind of sign in or re-verify yourself because you're using a random IP. This can be annoying, especially when using a lot of different websites. Dedicated IPs solve that problem and we don't see any support with ExpressVPN. That's a, kind of a big bummer in my opinion. Next up, we could talk a little bit about Ike V2 support. We do see that with ExpressVPN, Ike V2. Um, and automatic is gonna probably default to something like UDP OpenVPN. Um, so Ike V2 is gonna be a little bit faster to connect, but may not work on all networks and is easier to block. OpenVPN is a little bit slower to connect, but it has a good blend of speed and security. I do like how they provide you little details here in the application about that. We do like how there is Ike V2 support though. Not every VPN offers Ike V2, and I do like how it is an option, and we do see good explanation of set options. Now, ExpressVPN does not have WireGuard support at this time, and they're supposedly working on it, and also kind of like a new kind of protocol. I think it's called like Lightway or something like that. It's not out yet. It's only in beta testing. I asked ExpressVPN if I could test it for you guys to show you what it's like, but they didn't really want to give me access to it since it's not ready yet. So I'll have to wait on the verdict for that. But for right now, we don't see any WireGuard integration within the application itself. Not a deal breaker, but it's something I'm going to be looking for more and more. Uh, probably going into next year, to be honest, for most VPN applications to have some form of WireGuard support within the application. Finally, encryption customization. We don't see that here either. Um, there's no option to lower the encryption or increase the encryption or play around with different ciphers. Sometimes that can be cool to increase your speeds a little bit, give you a little bit of a boost. We don't see that here. Not only that, but like I talked about, we don't see any obfuscation techniques here like Stunnel, Stealth VPN, or anything like that to bypass um, VPN firewalls or VPN restrictions, which is definitely disappointing. I would have liked to see that. Um, you see that with some other VPNs. Um, IP leak protection, WebRTC leak protection. So this has that IP leak protection and WebRTC is pretty much just built in. So good to see there. Yes, ad blocking features. This is pretty disappointing to be honest. We don't see it with ExpressVPN. Um, I'm not sure why. I would like to see ad blocking integrated in the future for sure. Um, maybe some kind of ad blocking DNS if you do it like TorGuard. In fact, most VPN providers, if they have ad blocking within the application, it's through some kind of DNS that will block ads. So I really think they should implement that, to be honest. Um, Sox5 proxy support. Um, we already talked about that. I'm not sure why I have two on the list. I think I actually just kind of did this as a mistake. Um, so with proxy support and Sox5 proxy support, we don't need that for two of those. We definitely do not need two of those. Um, split tunneling, we do see split tunneling with um, ExpressVPN. This is one of their kind of standout features, I think, that not a lot of VPNs have. There's only a couple. And I'm going to be making a video about which ones do. Um, ExpressVPN, thankfully, is one that does. Um, it gets major points here because not every VPN does. Um, configuration while live use is another nice plus. You can connect to a server like this. Now you can easily just swap servers um, like this. So there we go, swapping there. You can also look at settings and so on. Very nice. Um, it'll disconnect automatically for you and reconnect to a different server. Um, although it didn't really look like it worked there. Let's try that again. So we connect here. So we are connected again. Let's go ahead and look at this and try this one. Um, we'll put do, don't show again, continue. And now let's see if it disconnects and reconnects. Um, there we go. Now it's working. Let's go to see that works. I like that. Some VPN providers like Torgold don't let you disconnect and reconnect in that kind of intuitive way. You have to disconnect and repick a server to reconnect. It's not as like live um, reconfiguration uh, able, if that makes sense. So configuration will allow you views. We don't see any server performance or latency presentation. We don't see any stats on servers or any way to categorize the servers really by use case or anything like that. It's just kind of recommended and stuff like that. So guys, in conclusion, what would I like to see ExpressVPN improve in the future? There are some kind of cool things I think they could do. I would like a dark mode. ExpressVPN's app looks okay. It's decent looking, but there's it's very bright. It's very white and there's no dark mode on Windows. I've seen Malwarebytes do this very well lately with their uh, Malwarebytes privacy VPN application. It has a light mode and a dark mode and the dark mode looks very sexy. So ExpressVPN, if you want to up your sexy game, continue uh, consider a dark mode. Um, it might be a little bit tricky for them because they're kind of like a more light themed VPN provider. I wouldn't really know how they would do it. Maybe if they do a black on red or something sexy like that, it would be really sexy. Very sexy. Did I say sexy enough? 
Anyways, guys, another one is that ExpressVPN does have limited simultaneous connections. Only five is not that good. More and more VPNs have eight to 10 simultaneous connections and ExpressVPN, even though it's more expensive than most other options, still is lagging behind here. I'm a little disappointed in that. Not only that, but I would like to see a kind of live update or way to view the servers that are stream compatible. Maybe pick certain ones that are listed in a way, like if you want to use certain services, use these ones. ExpressVPN, their whole kind of thing is that you could pick any server to watch any service, but sometimes certain servers are blocked and there's no way to really tell unless you're testing it. I would like some kind of indication, whether live or just if they update a lot, telling you which servers to use within the application so you don't have to talk to live chat. That makes sense, right? Lastly, I do want them to implement WireGuard into the application. I think it would make a really good thing for ExpressVPN or where they're doing a new protocol or whatever. And that's pretty much kind of my final thoughts on ExpressVPN. Anyways, guys, after doing this video, I kind of think that I might need to adjust ExpressVPN's application score a little bit. It's honestly quite missing a lot of the things I'm looking for in a VPN application. It does have some things I do like. It has split tunneling, um, and it does have some cool things like a first time setup process, which I didn't talk about, that lets you just copy a code and get into it using it fast. ExpressVPN at the end of the day, very new friendly, but it's actually lacking a good amount of customization and power features like ad blocking or stuff like dedicated IP support or even proxy or even DNS customization and an application kill switch. Some of these things I think are a little bit essential to be honest when looking at other VPN providers and ExpressVPN would step up their game and make a much better application if they just put in a little bit more effort and consider some of these things I'm talking about. Anyways guys, those are my thoughts on ExpressVPN. If you like these videos, let me know down in the comments down below and I'll look at another VPN's application and give my kind of consultant VPN knowledge and really critique it and say what it could improve. Anyways guys, I'll see you on the next video very soon.